can edit and and cut this part off on the on the last part. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Yes, it's blinking. Yeah, it says record. Okay, so yeah. we'll go ahead and get started. Got three minutes of tape on. Uh, my name's John Owens. I'm a professor here at UC Davis. Uh, we came down with six very talented graduates. We're good. It's already being recorded. We're good. We're good. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, six very talented graduate students and a postdoc here, also very talented. Um, and we're excited to share the work that we're doing here. Uh, some of you have come from industry, and we hope that you're going to have questions, and please raise your hand and interrupt us. I would say we've been, uh, we've left room for that in terms of what we're going to uh, talk about. So uh, we're going to divide this up into roughly five-minute chunks and talk about different aspects of the system that we build, which I will start telling you about. So uh, I'm going to introduce what we built and why we chose to build it, and then sort of the next part is to talk about the core of what we built and the applications that we built on top of that. And we have a couple showcase um, uh, research projects that we've been looking at and sort of talk about some of the future directions we might want to go. And then uh, Sarban will close with uh, a roadmap, some of the things that we're thinking about going forward. So what we built, what we've built is a open source GPU graph analytics framework. So. Uh, this has been a, a long-lasting project in our group. I've uh, been working on it really hard. It's the biggest project we've ever had in our group, and you can see that with the number of people that are actually up here. So first, what are we trying to do? We're trying to process graphs, and graphs are everywhere, and they're all over science and all over engineering. Uh, we can think about social networks or epidemiology or any of a very, very large uh, number of interesting problems, both in science and computing. And we'll process those with GPUs, which today you also find everywhere. So eight years ago when we started this project, um, there was sort of this open question that I always had to motivate why GPUs were interesting and why should we should work on GPUs. And lots of people had these questions about, well, we don't have GPUs in our systems, why should we do this? And is this real chicken and egg problem? 
And today we don't have to do that. Uh, today, any device you have in your pocket, on your lap, under your desk is going to have a GPU in it. Um, but more importantly for this kind of work is that every data center has GPUs in it. And so all of this machine learning workloads has really made my job of motivating this a whole lot easier. Um, because uh, graphs are require fast processing. You want to make very quick decisions when you have a graph. And so people care about running fast. And the GPU is a good match for that because it's a very powerful processor. So uh, in terms of bang for the buck, it's about the best thing you can buy, uh, trying to get things done quickly. And another reason we have to get things done quickly, or we'd like to get things done quickly, is because these things are very large. And so if you have to wait a long time to process your graphs, nobody wants to be able to do that. Um, but graphs of interest in industry and in science are billions of nodes and edges at this point. And so uh, we'd like to be able to process those in a reasonable amount of time. And there's challenges on the GPU for that. So GPUs have limited memory size, and that's something we have to think about. Um, but we're interested in scalability and moving uh, past single GPU. Doing this work is hard. Uh, and there's some reasons for this. One of the big reasons is that graphs are irregular. So there's lots of problems that map very nicely to the GPU. Uh, dense matrix operations for interest, for in in instance, and that's something in uh, the reason, part, part of the reason why machine learning has been such a success. That is a problem that's very regular, maps very nicely to the GPU. Graphs, on the other hand, are very irregular. Uh, nodes might have just a few neighbors, or they might have thousands or millions of neighbors. And so that sort of irregularity at a fine grained level makes it very hard to write efficient parallel programs. And making this even harder is that it's hard to program GPUs in general. Fortunately, we're good at that. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, becoming a premier group in this area. And so uh, we believe we've built a system that is very well suited for, uh, for running graph analytics. And in fact, is the, the leading system out there to do this. So just a little history. Uh, this work started in 2012. Uh, DARPA had a large big data initiative, uh, and all the work they, they sponsored turned out to be open source as part of it, um, because they saw sort of this era of big data coming, um, it was called X Data, and we started with one graduate student plus me uh, in a summer, and we started by writing one hardwired graph analytic, and we rapidly discovered what we really wanted to write was a programmable framework, it wasn't good enough, we couldn't scale ourselves if we wrote just one analytic at a time, so that's where Gunrock was born. Uh, it wasn't until four years later that we wrote our first paper on Gunrock, uh, but that was an award-winning paper uh, at ACMP POP, which is ACM's premier parallel computing conference. Um, the next year, we expanded to multiple GPUs on the same node, um, and that was a large technical achievement because that's what led to a lot of interest, both in industry and in um, government, to try to run scalable graph analytics. So, more recently, we've joined the DARPA Hive project. Uh, the goal of Hive is they're sponsoring hardware and software that will run a thousand times faster than the state of the art. And we are the state of the art. So I've been made clear to everybody in the room that if we only lose by a factor of 999, then we win, which is exciting. Um, but being chosen was a great honor, and we're writing really great code to make the uh, team that's actually building this hardware their job as difficult as possible. Um, and then just last year, we had an AI lab from NVIDIA that was established, and this is very exciting to us because NVIDIA is integrating our uh, graph framework into their RAPIDS initiative, which is their big data, data science kind of initiative. And so that's, again, an open source initiative, and um, we're honored to be chosen. We're working fairly closely with them to try to make this as useful as they can uh, for, our, for, for their customers. And so, you know, a lot of times in academia, we just write papers, uh, but with this project, we're really trying to have some practical so, um, you know, what do we want to do with Gunrock? What are some of our goals? So, one of the big goals here is that we want to build the state-of-the-art uh, graph processing library, and I think we've been successful at being able to do that. We are the library that everybody compares to. Um, but we feel that we can put this into broader use. We want to make sure that what we've built is useful for people in the field that are actually interested in doing graph analytics. We want it to be general. Okay, we want to cover an enormous range of graph analytics. Um, and we want to make sure these cover not just the narrow sorts of things that people often do um, to write papers, you know, this small set of analytics. We want to make sure that across computing we're actually solving problems people care about. And we'd also like to move into solving problems in the scientific domains where computer scientists often don't have the same sort of impact. We're really interested in making this programmable. We want it easy to program, and that's something that I push on all the time. And we want to make sure it's scalable when we do. Um, and so we want to make it easy for people to take the programs we've written and write it, and we'll hear about that a little bit more, but also to write their own. And we 
And finally, we're very interested in scalability. We know that the problems we want to solve are just enormous and they continue to grow. And right now, it's a, a framework that works just on a single node with multiple GPUs. But in the long run, we'd really like to uh, expand to um, going out of core, uh, sort of scale up, as well as a distributed system, which is scale down. So I'm going to turn it over to Mohamed Osama, who's uh, leading our internal development of the Gumrat Core, to talk about the Gumrat Core. Thank you, Sean. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Osama, and I'll be talking more about sort of the internals of Gunrock, how it works, uh, what is a programming model, and uh, some of the work that I've been heavily involved in. Um, right. So Gunrock's programming model focuses on two key things. One is that it's a data-centric extraction. So it, it has a notion of just working on the actual data you have. Um, and also, it is a fault synchronous programming model, which I'll, both, uh, I'll clarify what those are. So a data-centric abstraction includes a frontier, where a frontier is just a group of vertices or edges. You can simply imagine that you have a graph, and then it has a bunch of nodes that you care about, and you build a frontier based off of a subset of that graph, or maybe the entire graph in itself. Um, and these nodes, uh, these elements in the frontier could be vertices of a graph or edges of the graph. And then we have parallel operators that function on that frontier. So these operators are highly optimized, um, programmed to the core, um, and they allow you to manipulate the frontier in, in ways that you'd want to express your algorithms in. And we have a variety of uh, 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 parallel operators such as advanced filter for intersection and more. An example of a parallel operator is an advanced operator. Let's say the green is your frontier, your input frontier, and what you'd like to do is visit, visit all the neighbors of that frontier, of the elements within that frontier. So the resultant frontier that you'll generate will be the source nodes that you started with and all of their neighbors. And then you can use these frontiers to then express your, uh, you can use these parallel operators to then express your algorithm. And you do that, do that using Bolt synchronous, synchronous Programming Model. Uh, so Bolt Synchronous Programming Model includes two things. One is the parallel operators that I talked about, and the other thing is the global barriers in between them. So an example would, will be a single source shortest path, um, an algorithm that a lot of people care about, how to get to from one point to another in, in the fastest way possible. Um, and to do that, what you can simply do is an advanced operator where you have an input frontier, all the nodes that you care about, visit the neighbors, figure out the distances from your input source to the destination, and then filter the ones out that you don't care about. So these are two operators. A filter operator just removes the nodes that you don't care about. An advanced operator visits or advances to the neighbors. Um, and in between them, there's global barriers. So these operators in itself are parallel operators and then there's global barriers in between them, and then you loop uh, until your algorithm converges, or until there's nothing left in the frontier to process. Some of the challenges associated with writing these parallel operators or building this fault synchronous programming model within Gunrock uh, uh, is stuff like graphs being irregular. Um, John already talked about that, and this is one of the key things that I focus on. How to handle irregular workloads within GP. Um, there's other stuff uh, that's really important as well, like GPU resource utilization. There's a bunch of compute units available within GPU. There's memory bandwidth available within GPU. How to use that in the best way possible, and how to write algorithms and express operators in such a way that it, it is able to utilize the entire GPU in the best possible way. Um, there's also techniques such as kernel fusion, which allows us to merge different kernels together uh, to reduce sort of the time it takes to execute a single operation. Um, there's also user-defined functions, which is a very important element of Gunrock, which is, allows you to express your own functions that you care about within that algorithm while the algorithm is processing. Um, so in the example I provided uh, in the previous slide was single source shortest path. In that, uh, a user-defined function might be calculating the distances of the neighbors that you want to visit or you care about. Uh, we'd also like to express asynchronous algorithms, and that's one of the challenges because both synchronous programming model doesn't exactly allow us to do that. And Yushin will uh, clarify how we are able to achieve that with uh, new additions to Gunrock. Um, there's also dynamic graph problems that people care about and that we want to support, and Mohammed will talk about that more as well. 
So I will focus on the irre irregular workload, workload part of this. So um, what exactly are some of the irregular workloads? Any of the scale tree graphs that you can imagine social networks where one person is really popular, is a celebrity, and might have connections to a million other people, while other people might only have few friends that they're connected to on a social network graph. Um, so any sort of scale uh, free graphs that have varying degree of neighbors introduces this irregularity that, that's found within the graph. Um, on the right side is a very simplified version of what a GPU architecture might look like. So GPUs are uh, a SIMD architecture, so single instruction, multiple data. So a single instruction is processing on a ton of data all together. Um, and 32 threads within a GPU are all run in lockstep, so they're all doing the same thing at the, same, at the exact same time in parallel. Um, so you can already imagine the problem where if I gave a social network graph to this architecture, whereas one thread will be assigned a million nodes of, of maybe a celebrity, while all the other uh, threads are processing regular people's <coughs> neighbors, um, all the other threads will then be stalling or waiting to, for this one thread to finish before they can pr proceed further to the next step, doing the next thing that they want to do. And that's bad, because we want all the threads be busy doing something and doing something useful and not just stalling. Um, and here's one of the key contributions in Gunrock comes into play, which is load balancing. Gun load balancing is what makes Gunrock great and be able to compare uh, the, the, and be the state of the art in this work, uh, in graph analytics. And that's why people compare uh, their work to us, because we do load balancing really well for these problems. Um, so one sort of key takeaway from this is our load balancing strategies are amazing, and we'd like to extend that to other stuff as well. Um, and that's why uh, Gunrock is great. And we support tons of different uh, load balancing strategies as well. Uh, there's static load balancing, uh, so the, the two types of load balancing that you can possibly